Tropical depression heading towards Tanzania in East Africa on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May the 1st. We're entering a new month and this is usually the month where the Northern Hemisphere starts to wake up but for the time being we've still got Southern Hemisphere activity and that is Tropical Depression 10 which has just formed uh, near Grand Terre in the eastern, sorry, western Seychelles and is heading westwards towards the eastern part of Africa in uh, the coast of Tanzania. Well, it's 31 short days until the Atlantic hurricane season begins and of course there's still no areas of interest right now and indeed hardly anything boiling in the lower tropics either, just a few little areas there in the very deep zones. Just two weeks until the Eastern Pacific gets off the ground officially and there is a big line of storms now in the intertropical convergence zone there but none of them looking likely to develop into a tropical cyclone and I say that lightly because really there's zero chance of any of those forming. And in the Western Pacific, convection is also starting to increase here in the lower latitudes, but still no signs of formation for anything there right now either. And in the Bay of Bengal, a little bit, a modest amount of convection starting to blow up in various parts of the deep tropics and just a little thunderstorm or two just off the coast of Odisha there. In the Australian region, things looking pretty quiet here with a few little thunderstorms uh, off to the to east there towards the Solomon Islands and eventually towards Fiji. They're not quite getting there, I don't think, near northern Vanuatu. Here's the Tropical Depression 10, that's the label from Meteo France in view of a name. Uh, we don't have a name for it yet, but if it does become a tropical storm, which could happen at any time, uh, then it would be named Hidaya. And this is the South Pacific and it is, well, pretty dead. There's hardly anything going on here and that's plain to see for all. So it's a bit of a struggle with labels here, but we're just going to call it TD10 because that's the Mateo France designation. It is 90S, the Invest tag. JWC haven't called it a depression yet. It's 86 kilometers from Grand Terre, which is a small island there just uh, in the westernmost part of the Seychelles. 131 from nearby Assumption Island, 265 from Astarve, 357 from Grand Comore, the Comoros Islands, that's the largest, uh, highly, most populous uh, island with the capital Moroni, and 607 kilometers from Matwara in the so southernmost part of Tanzania. Well, let's check satellite imagery and how it's appearing and it's looking pretty decent it's gotten a lot better maybe not quite as much in those latest frames but it looks like rotations just about managed to close it off and we just need some more convection over the sensor to probably give it tropical storm status there were two ascap passes in the last 12 to 24 hours and they both missed unfortunately so we can't really tell you exactly how strong this storm is we're having to rely on satellite estimates and modeling to give you an indication of how strong it is right now but the estimates Estimate is 35 miles per hour and a pressure of around 999 millibars. So it's likely to become a tropical storm pretty soon if it keeps going like this, although convection just off the boil slightly there and it's sort of become a little bit decoupled on that infrared. So it's still got a little bit of work to do before it gets much better and it's not expected to become a particularly strong storm, probably reaching a peak around 50 miles per hour. Well, this is what the Atlantic looks like right now off the coast of the uh, United States and there's a weak front there and a stronger one of course moving through the plains right now, another enhanced risk in effect today. And this is the eastern Atlantic, the uh, tropical zone there, a few little things bubbling up. And there's the eastern Pacific showing a few little areas of convection, of course none of them organised, the eastern one probably showing the most promise if you are really reaching uh, but nothing's expected to form. And this is the western Pacific showing a few little areas of convection but really nothing substantial a little bit of rainfall for parts of the Philippines which I'm sure need it right now after the recent heat. 
although not all places are getting any of that. In the Indian Ocean as well, uh, one or two spots there along the east coast of India getting a little bit of a thunderstorm or two. Maybe the monsoon season is on its way, who knows. And this is the sea surface temperatures. Well, the eastern Pacific still has that big cool spot there towards the south there. Uh, that's a clear indication of this potential La Nina, but warm waters further north. The Atlantic, those 26 degree isotherms extending off the coast of Florida now up the Gulf Stream quite a way. And in the western Pacific, we're looking at good temperatures, very warm temperatures in the South China Sea over 30 degrees Celsius and in the Philippine Sea looking decent as well pushing close to 30 degrees and over at Guam is around 28 to 29. Bay of Bengal is piping hot with temperatures exceeding 32 degrees in some spots there including the Andaman Sea and the very northernmost part of the Bay of Bengal looking pretty good as well even up there along the coast of Bangladesh is over 30. Now, near where this depression is, those temperatures over the Comoros around uh, 29 degrees Celsius, and off the east coast of Madagascar, it's looking decent as well, still in those lower latitudes. Off Australia, temperatures still looking good, around 29 degrees Celsius, but they are starting to noticeably decrease, uh, so time is running out for any late systems there in the Australian region. And in the South Pacific, it looks like this, with a serious area there of uh, warm waters over 30 degrees Celsius, north of Fiji and north of Vanuatu. Any latecomers there could be forming in that zone. And the sea surface temperature anomalies look like this. We're looking at generally warm waters in most of the areas that matter. Eastern Pacific still with that big cool anomaly in the deep tropics equatorial zone, the sign of that La Nina approaching possibly. And in the deep Atlantic, it's very much warmer than usual, although a significant cool spot now showing up in the Sargasso Sea, which I find interesting, uh, but certainly the MDR is looking good. And near the Comoros, those temperatures about one to two degrees above average as well. Well, oceanic heat content looks like this in the South Pacific still at this point, and there's still very favourable amounts there, including in parts of the Coral Sea. Eastern Pacific continues to start ramping up, and I can tell you the Atlantic's looking decent in the Caribbean as well. We'll start showing you that a lot more in the course of this month. And in the Western Pacific, those uh, oceanic heat content values really rising up towards the coast of the Eastern Philippines. Well, this is the GFS model. It actually initializes the system, the depression, as a tropical storm, but we're not convinced by that, and I'm really not sure what it's doing on the model run. It almost has two cyclones merged into one there. A uh, very strange pattern that we're looking at, uh, certainly towards the end there when it makes landfall. But the takeaway from this really is that its peak intensity will probably occur in the next 24 to 48 hours, and then it will start slowly weakening most likely, and will barely be a tropical storm by the time it reaches eastern Tanzania. But nonetheless, it is going to be a pretty rare landfall, and will be very uh, wet and serious flooding issues possible. Now look at this in the Australian region, right near the end of the five day period. Look at that, that's a tropical storm forming way up there. You don't normally see that in the very easternmost Indonesian islands, um, a potential tropical cyclone developing. We're not confident enough on this yet, uh, and that's why we haven't designated any percentage chances. ECMWF has the same situation pretty much, but just a day or two later. Now this is the rainfall expectations from our tropical depression in the southwest Indian Ocean and they are going to be quite heavy amounts. Let's take a look there around Grand Terre. Uh, we're looking at significant rainfall amounts there up to 12 inches on top of anything that's already happened so far, 300 millimeters, maybe a little bit more. And along the coast of uh, Tanzania, uh, the rain does really start to taper off as it gets towards land, but we're still looking at amounts close to 12 inches there as well. <coughs> and that is 300 millimeters and 11 inches there on the island of Mafia just off the coast of Tanzania and the rain doesn't quite get as far as Zanzibar and the capital Dar es Salaam but it could get a little bit wet there too. Looking at the moderate range then, day 5 to 10, you can see a battle of potentially two cyclones here off the top end of Australia but the first one we were watching wins out in the end and it eventually it ends up pretty close to Darwin by the looks of things there as a tropical storm before dying off towards the end of that 10 day period. It does actually get quite strong, especially for a May storm, which is rare in the first place. But there it is, nearly hurricane strength there, just off the top end of Australia, very sparsely populated, good, uh, thank thankfully, and then off towards the southwest. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. 
Yep, there it is. Still waiting for Hone. Now in the silly range, let's take a look at what's in store for day 10 to 16. And very little actually, nothing at all except a tiny thing that appears right at the end of this run. This is over two weeks away so I wouldn't think anything of it, but there is a little cyclone that starts to form there near Papua New Guinea and then starts to move towards the southwest into the Coral Sea. Very low chance of that so far, but we'll keep an eye on it. Anything in the Westpac and North Indian Ocean, I know we saw some cyclones there a few days ago on the models, nothing from the GFS today. A completely different story back in 1971 however and that's on this day today we had Typhoon Wanda which was a category 1 passing very close to the coast of Vietnam didn't quite make landfall and we had Super Typhoon Amy which was really ramping up on this day and by the time we got to 6 a.m. on the 2nd of May it reached category 5 status and got beyond that I think something like 180 185 miles per hour which was an incredible amount Obviously, that's just the sources back then, and there is a lot of discrepancies. I think that may have even been the CMA, which, as we know, uh, upped everything back then. But certainly, uh, a darn sight different to what we've got today in the Western Pacific. Well, let's take a look at the names coming up then in the Atlantic. Our first name this season will be Alberto. We haven't seen it yet. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Aleta. And in the Central Pacific, it will still be Hone, which has been missing for five years. In the Western Pacific, our next name on the list is Awinyar. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Rimal. We're still locked to just 15 storms this year so far, which is a little bit below average. And we are about 33% below average for accumulated cyclone energy this year so far usually means something big will happen to bring it back. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin. Southwest Indian Ocean, of course, Hidaya could be happening right now. And in the South Pacific, it is Pitta. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow.